Hey, what's up, Paxers? So the internet ate my earlier broadcast where we tried uh, surface mount soldering the second side of Boldport's Binko PCB in a binary counter. You can see part one from Friday uh, a little bit down the page or in our videos section. But since that happened, I thought I would still share with you some cool stuff that I've learned from the Boldport group. Uh, actually, if you join the Boldport club, there's a Slack that you can use to discuss techniques, tools, and other cool stuff with the rest of the community. Uh, and here's some stuff that I learned that will make my life much easier as I get more into surface mount soldering world. Uh, so first up, there's the stick vise. I was been use I've been using this like tiny little vise that's made of plastic with some little thin metal parts, and it's really not going to hold up too much. When it like it's perfect for sort of low risk, low volume soldering. Uh, but when it gets to the point where you're trying to actually produce stuff at volume or uh, in a workshop where things may not always be like uh, there may be heat guns doing their thing and like melting everything in their vicinity, this is not necessarily optimal. So the stick vise is one solution to that. Um, it's a very low profile vise, so you don't have to clamp it onto the edge of a table or anything. Uh, which was always something that I uh, had trouble doing because, you know, all the tables are weird and different. Anyway, so here's a stick vise. You basically hand tighten it down to a certain uh, sort of gentle grip and then you use the nut to uh, hold it in place. And then these two little jaws are spring-loaded so that you can pop the board in and out without too much fuss. And that looks really cool. Um, it's been recommended by the community. You can check out all the specs here and there's different ways of hacking your vise. It looks like it'd be pretty easy to 3D print your own parts for it as well, which I just totally love. Um, you can get it. They're really excited for you to buy it. Uh, and let's see what Amazon has it on there for. You can get high temperature jaws as well, which is exactly what I needed this morning. I ended up holding my PCB with some pliers instead while I was heat gunning it, and that was subpar. <laughs> 30 bucks. You can get it for 30 bucks. That is no problem. All right, then next up, you've got the PCB or PC Byte. Uh, their video actually doesn't include anyone saying the name of it. So much like PCB Mode or PCB Mod E, uh, the PCB design software, I'm assuming that you can say it either way. PC Byte, I'm going to say because I think it's more fun, uh, is a non traditional type of vice type genre object. Uh, it's these four little magnetic um, spring-loaded jaws, uh, cylinder things that just bite onto the corners of your project, and they mount to this magnetic base, uh, which is silvery, which is kind of cool, because that means that you can see the bottom of your PCB really easily at the same time. I love that part of it. Uh, and then you just like do these little jaw things to really quickly grab it. You can flip it upside down, you can take it between stations and stuff. It's not heavy like most uh, vice solutions are and it looks pretty stable. Um, the interesting thing about these two different options, right? You've got the stick vice, you've got the PC bite. Um, one of them is very flat on the table, and the other one is more uh, elevated in the air. I tend to personally prefer something that's a little bit off the table, because otherwise I find myself just, like, totally hunching over. And, you know, this only gives you a couple inches of lift, but I'm more comfortable soldering that way. Other people may find that they need, like, a wrist pad if they want to go this way, and may be more comfortable with the table-mounted solution of the stick vise. Um, next up, there was a really cool uh, thing that... Uh, so the Boldport team was cutting some vinyl stickers uh, on a silhouette cameo machine, which is something that's usually marketed to, for example, uh, scrapbookers and crafters and stuff. In this case, they were using it as a miniature vinyl cutter, which I think is pretty cool. But also, um, Mike's Electric Stuff has posted this video of using it to create your own DIY surface mount stencil, which I think is wonderful. Um, that's a great idea. Because, for example, the Binko, uh, the board that I was just soldering today, comes with uh, no stencil. <laughs> and so I've been sort of messing around with syringes and stuff and trying to figure out what my favorite way of soldering is, right? Uh, this, like, hands down the most experience that I have is with stencils. And if you're doing anything at volume, like once you move from having just a hobby project to something that you want to produce more professionally, this is going to save your life. Um, in addition to that, you'll probably want some kind of a jig, so uh, something to hold, like you just precisely place the boards in place, 
uh, and then you have this stencil secured over it in some way such that you can just flip it down onto it, squeegee the paste through, and this is a great way of setting that up really easily. There's also a, a company called Osh Stencils, open source hardware stencils, uh, that will make you these really pretty metal ones, and those are great, especially if you're doing something at a high volume. Um, like with plastic ones like this, sort of done with a transparency type material, uh, it's nice because you can kind of see where the solder paste has crept under, but also it makes it a lot more likely that the solder paste is going to creep under the stencil because it will, like, for example, uh, the silhouette uses a knife so you don't have as much danger of heat warping, but for example if you want to laser cut a stencil, you can do that, but you may end up with warped plastic that, that when you go to squeegee the paste underneath, it'll get trapped uh, under the stencil as well. And it's not a huge deal, but if you're doing a lot of things and trying to really turn them over, um, that's just like an extra sort of unpredictable factor that might short out some connections and you don't want. So uh, yeah, lots of cool stencil opportunities. And yeah, uh, OSH stencils is going to make you some nice metal ones if you're after that. Uh, next up, they mentioned the Volterra. Someone was really uh, going on about this thing, and I can see why. It is $3,500, but if you are uh, prototyping lots of PCBs, that could easily be worth it, because the wait time alone on the, for the turnaround on a PCB, you know, you can go uh, this way, which you can see off the, on the stick vise, they've got an example of a uh, DIY either etched or milled PCB. They took some copper clad board and they etched it with a chemical etchant or they used a mill. It kind of looks more like a mill in this case because uh, it's, it's very deep. Um, to remove the copper from the surface selectively to create traces and stuff, right? But if you want to go a little more high class than that, or if you want to experiment with other things than copper, this is a really cool machine. Um, so it basically takes these uh, 5cc standard vials of whatever material, they provide a silver conductive ink to print the traces for your PCB, and they also give you thermal paste so that you can um, tin the pads of either want something that you've printed on this board or, or, or uh, on this machine or something that you've gotten professionally fabbed by a, a shop. And it can just easily, uh, let me see if I can find the video for you, yeah, it just prints the stuff on here really easily. Um, gotta mute this video. Uh, 20 micron precision, blah blah blah, but look, it's just like, this part is boring. <laughs> Uh, but there, you can see it's like printing your uh, your circuit board right there onto the fiberglass. And in this case, they're using a pretty standard um, substrate for the PCB, but they also show that you can do it on like flex PCB material, like maybe Kapton tape, uh, on glass and other materials, which is just crazy. Uh, and yeah, all the, the sheer amount of experimentation that you could do. Plus, it can uh, then, you know, dispense the solder, solder paste on top of that. And then you can uh, place your components and it will automatically reflow them. So it'll heat up the platform like an electric skillet and uh, you can just watch your, your parts get soldered on, which just sounds like magic. It sounds amazing, um, and there's a lot of feedback and programmability and stuff. Here's the oh yeah, here's the little bit where they show the different uh, materials that you can print on. It's pretty cool. Glass, flexible stuff like the orange one kind of looks like Kapton tape, you know, uh, this standard green PCB material. So good, yeah. So if you got thirty five hundred dollars that you're not sure how to drop, this is a pretty good option, and I'm sure that your <clears throat> local hacker space would probably appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and you can choose your voltage and stuff. Cool, that's Volterra. Um, another cool thing that I didn't know existed was uh, silicone soldering pads and mats, which is really cool. So, you know, I've been using a table with a, a wooden surface, which is also so optimal for doing anything like heat gunning on top of. Someone was like, you should use a third hand for that. I still don't want to be heat gunning that close to a wooden table. And so here's a solution for that. So just like those silicone base baking mats that you use for cookies in the oven, uh, if you do, which you should because cookies are delicious, um, you can use this to put underneath your soldering station, like your, your reflow heat hot air soldering station, whatnot. 
Um, and it'll protect your work surface, stuff doesn't stick to it, so you don't have to keep, you know, putting new pieces of paper and stuff underneath. A lot of these also have these cool little repositories for components. I didn't know these were so cheap. It's really cool. <laughs> I'm just like in this whole new world of starry-eyed wonder over these tools. But yeah, so you can uh, easily sort and keep track of your different components while you're disassembling and reassembling stuff, which is just super cool. Um, and Amazon actually has a couple recommendations for the best selling and lowest price one and also the top rated one and they're both under $12 so that's pretty legit um, I'm really excited about that and that'd be a great like stocking stuffer for whoever uh, is on your list depending on the size of their stockings you know have to get a big stocking but uh, it'd probably make them pretty happy and finally, so those are our tools that we've looked at. The stick vise, the PC byte, uh, this method, oh, this is not a tool. This is, well, okay, the silhouette cameo lit cutter, cutting knife thing, uh, Volterra. Uh, oh, so you can find this video on Mike, Mike's electric stuff. Uh, he said that the way that he made this stencil is by just exporting the DXF from the solder mask layer, I think it was. No, the solder, he said solder paste layer. Uh, of the PCB design files as a DXF cutting file, which is the same as you would use on like some laser cutters and uh, some like routing machines and stuff, a pretty common CNC machine file, which apparently the Silhouette Cameo also takes and just send that to the machine and it does it. Beautiful. And uh, he's got some cool views of like the actual thing that he's soldering as well, which is this massive bank of components. Uh, and that would be a huge pain to do by hand. So a real time saver. Uh, the Volterra V1, and your silicone soldering mats, and finally, if you, it's not the tools that you're lacking, but you just need a little bit of technique help, which I definitely still do, uh, I geeked out on this video this morning, which is a beautiful video of uh, surface mount soldering fine pitch, and the cool thing about this video is that they not only show you how to solder it uh, with really pretty drag soldering, I mean, the camera quality and everything is just, it's just so good. But also, at the end of the, each row, they intentionally bridge a few of the pins and then show you how to unbridge them without solder wick. These people have very strong opinions about the best way of desoldering uh, bridged pins, and they seem to have all the answers, and I would totally go with that, um, what they suggest. So, for example, um, solder wick, they say that it can mar the surface, it can lead to corrosion and stuff. Um, and that is just messy. Uh, they got some other hot tips too, but watch this. Watch how they bridge these components first off. Like, the skill with which they bridge the components by accident is already like astounding to me. And then they just like heat the ends of the pins in order to draw the heat out and therefore the solder, uh, which always seeks the heat. And they've got a couple other extra tips about the solder wick and also about immediately cleaning off the flux because the flux residue can become reactivated and become corrosive and whatnot. Um, so lots of cool tips here. This is from the channel, uh, this is from John Gamel, who teaches STC soldering training and certification. Uh, so I don't feel bad that I can't yet solder as well as John, but I uh, definitely got some jealousy going on. So check out this out. It's also just like great eye candy. Like watch this. Let's watch a little bit more. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're taking away the flux, we get it, okay. And then they, you can see that they've just sort of tacked down the first few pins of each side of this chip so that it will stay in place while they do drag soldering on the rest of the, of the pins. And that's, that's, that's just beautiful. It's so gorgeous. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> All right, so stay tuned. Um, in a few minutes here, we're actually going to have a look at some beginner gifts for people working with micro bits, and uh, that'll be all for today's MCU Monday. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in a minute. Oh, where did Facebook go? Ah, here we go. <laughs> all right, ciao.